You know, you and I have a common friend. Her name is Marion Webster. And she thinks doodling is a mindless activity of scribbling. I know women are always right. <laughs> and persuasive, apparently. But I think she's totally wrong there. I think doodling is planned drawing, purposeful drawing. And I'm going to stick to that convention with confidence because Mary Ann is not in the room. So we're good with that. I have three teenagers. That itself is a problem. <laughs> Which is why I often have this urge to go on top of a building and jump. But I do know that if I jump, I'll end up either in the ER or the morgue. And I didn't have to Google this. <laughs> I didn't have to actually jump a few times to find that out either. <laughs> but if I take a robot with ha which has a lot of artificial intelligence, infused in it, on top of that building, and nudge it towards the edge, this guy has no clue. He'll just drop off. It's a good thing I placed my mattress down there, because he won't crash and get hurt. But why? Because he hasn't been trained for this particular situation. If I were to train this robot to understand the dangers around him, I would have to actually push this guy from the top of a building a few hundred times. AI is fast, but has no common sense, unlike people. I, for example, don't drive on the wrong side of the road. I don't cross a railway track when a train is barreling towards me. And I don't expect to win an argument with my wife. I didn't actually get trained on these, well, except for the last one. <laughs> a couple of knocks with a frying pan did that one. But I was a quick learner. But computers, though, are not very smart. We have to give them explicit instructions on what to do. One time, a programmer forgot a hyphen, and it blew up an $80 million rocket. So you can't make mistakes, so we figured, can we use some other mechanism to make them smarter? Today, a lot of people upload pictures onto Facebook and videos onto YouTube. Why not feed that into computers to make them smarter? That is the foundation of artificial intelligence. But AI, though, still works in a digital world, ones and zeros. It can recognize the picture of a tennis ball and say that's a tennis ball, but it has no clue what that tennis ball is used for. Humans, on the other hand, we work in a conceptual world. We not only know and recognize the tennis ball, we know what it's used for, and we come up with these creative uses. If you walk into a school today, you will find tennis balls plopped under the chairs of legs so that it doesn't make a screeching noise as the chair is dragged across the room makes teachers happy. So humans, we create mental models of the world, and we navigate this world through mental models. Let's say you and I want to have a conversation about improving the school systems. You come to the table with a mental model, I come to the table with a mental model, we have a discussion, our mental models change, and boom we walk away with some great ideas on how to fix the system. But computers are awful at this. They just throw junk at you. One time I wanted to find out if I should get universal life insurance, so I Googled it. 
and behind the Google search bar is an AI system. It threw me back 57 million results. 57 million results. By the time I go through them, I'll be dead. <laughs> Gone to the grave without knowing the answer to that question. Should I have bought universal life insurance? <laughs> what I really need is an agent, an agent who can use his knowledge, experience, education, and the 57 million results along with my particular circumstance to give me a simple answer. Should I get universal life insurance or not? That's it. In some sense, each of us is an agent, an agent of change. We have within ourselves the knowledge that we can share with others. And if we knew how to share it well, then it enriches the life of others as well as ourselves. So how do you do that? I claim doodling. As toddlers, we used to doodle. The page served as our artboard. It was an artboard for our mind. We put our imagination down on this artboard. We knew what aliens looked like, didn't we? We knew what God looked like. But over time, we got educated out of this single biggest advantage we have over AI. Why so? Why single biggest advantage? Because doodling helps us express human qualities that AI does not possess. Human qualities like creativity, imagination, storytelling. So the schools, they ripped this blank sheet of paper out, gave us ruled sheets, so we had to write from left to right. One genius came up, came up with a language where you could go from right to left, but that was the extent of our creativity. By thinking linearly, we are working in a one-dimensional world. We think one dimensions. But the real world is multidimensional. So if you take multidimensions and squish it into one dimension, you are losing a lot of information. That's like looking at you as a person and trying to understand you by looking at your shadow instead. How, how does this work? It's like looking at your shadow and say, oh, look at her shadow and how it moves. She must be an INTJ on the Meyer Briggs scale. <laughs> but what we lose by reducing the dimensions is we lose the idea. We lose the idea, and that is tragic. So, how do you get out of this one-dimensional world? Start doodling. It has no grammar, and that's a blessing, <laughs> especially for people like me. It probably makes English teachers happy as well. They don't have to check for grammar or spelling. You can color outside the box. There are no rules. You're just letting your mind wander. I have social proof that doodling works. One time, a few years back, some executives wanted to understand some complex topics in artificial intelligence. So I doodled it up and put it up on YouTube. And now, 18,000 plus followers seem to follow me. So there must be something to it. So how do you start to doodle, you ask? You could start simple, and then you will develop your own style. So you could use rectangles for expressing con concrete concepts, like buildings or bulldozers or boats. You can use ovals to represent abstract concepts like consciousness, culture, curiosity. And then we have stick figures for humans. You have arrows for relationships. And then we can use squiggly lines for anything else. Nobody cares. It's your picture. Nobody's going to see it. Well, that, that part didn't work out for me, though, as you can see.
So I'm using doodling to solve a problem at home. This is me and my perception of success. You work hard, you succeed over time. This is my teenager's perception of success. <laughs> spend money, go broke, spend more money, wait for an inheritance. If this, could, if this kid took a look at my bank account, he'll be in for a surprise. <laughs> so therefore, I'm trying hard to push him out of the house to get to college <laughs> so he can learn his own success curve. And that's me trying to research all the college majors like engineering, biology, or even squirrel watching. <laughs> as long as this guy gets out. And this is my wife and I in some future state, peaceful, <laughs> after Elvis, the kid, has left the building. <laughs> so let's say you ask me to share some knowledge with you, something that I'm an expert in. And we try to do this through, doodl through doodling. I come to the table with a blank sheet of paper, no preconceived notions, just some preparedness. And then as, as I start to doodle, you ask questions. As you ask these questions, the shape of the doodle changes, the story changes. Then suddenly, these ideas are not my ideas, becomes our ideas. The experience becomes a shared experience. And I gain a lot from it as much as you have gained from it. That's the power of doodling. A couple of years back, or not a couple, a few years back, two guys in San Antonio walked into a bar. They grabbed a napkin and drew a triangle on it that launched Southwest Airlines. A doodle launched Southwest Airlines. That could have been us. We could have been rich. I mean, uh, we could have started a new business model for the benefit of mankind. <laughs> so when you doodle with somebody, you establish a deep connection. And you exchange ideas, ideas that form the foundation of human progress. Doodling is ultimately human. AI cannot doodle, at least intelligently. Doodling has transformed me, and it will transform you if you take an attempt at it. This is our shared experience for today. Go out and doodle. Thank you. <laughs>